Hey guys, what's up? I'm the Zombie Games. He's Viking Kill. So welcome back to another tale. Today we are going to be reacting to Cole McGrath versus Alex Merther Death Battle. And don't mind my faith, I just went to the dentist and got a cavity filled. My right side is numb as fuck still, but other than that, hopefully you guys enjoy the quality content. You ready to start this video? The death battle? Well, before we go into this, we should first kind of talk a bit about, um, rel is that uh, we both have played these games, but I played the infamous games, he's played the prototype games. Yes, prototype. Is it's been a long time since we Those played these games, but I played all of them that are available, and I think he played all of the prototype games that are available at the time. Yeah, because there's only two. Well, yeah, I know. Please make a third one, Activision, if you. But when it comes to Cole ever. McGrath, there are only two games that feature him. So, Infamous Second Son, I, I don't think they're going to be bringing that up, just because there's no, mm -hmm. there's only one mention of Cole in that game, and that's just his name. That's about it. As mm -hmm. for, and also as for which version of Cole they're going to be using, because this has been a question I am, I have been asking myself for quite a while. I do believe it's probably going to be the good version, because Death Battle has always been about using the canon version of characters, and the canon Bullshit. version... Out okay, unless it's a Some special, special case, for the most part, they keep up to canon, okay? Because if you're going to be bringing up, oh, what about Super Saiyan 4, because it's fucking bullshit, non-canon, yeah, I know. But guess what, they did that for that specific Death Battle, because they thought, why not? Same could also be said for Darth Vader and Yobito versus freaking Darth Vader Death Battle. They didn't use the Legends comics because that's not canon to Darth Vader's canon story. You see what mm -hmm. I'm getting at? Mm hmm. The canon, yeah. the canon story, the canon version of Cole McGrath's story is where he sacrifices himself to defeat the Beast. But he does have a lot of powers. Well, I'll let them explain that. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying, which version do I think they're going to use? Probably the good version. But uh, what are your thoughts sure. going into this with Prototype? It's going to be good. I haven't played the games in a fuck long tons of time, but... But from what can you remember? Over from what I remember, is there's one category I think Cole's going to lose in. What's that? Versatility. Alex Mercer has a shit ton of powers from what I remember. He can do a bunch of busted ash random ass shit. I guess I'll just say... Cole is able to do cool. quite a bit what? with his lightning too, but from what, what I've seen, see what Death Alex does have a say. lot more physicality, like with the stuff. I guess I have no idea what that shit is. But anyways, as far that... as I, not just that. As far as I think, depending on uh, how they go, depending on it, I think like, how would you put that? Like not durability, not durability. I think endurance would go to Alex Mercer because you can literally leap from buildings like it's nothing. Well, Cole's able to literally fight on for hours at a time so long as he, as he has electricity around him. Like, and yeah, I mean, like I'm, around him, I'm, like in the air. No, I know. I'm just saying. See, but with electricity, Alex Mercer just jumps in buildings casually without needing. I think it's part of his. I know, power. but all he has to do is just touch onto probably. something that has a conduit, even a person. No, I know. You ready to start this though and see how they see what they say about him? Yeah. I'm at six seconds. I'm at six seconds too. Three, two, one, go. I'm actually Cole excited McGrath, for this. The patron Singer. saint of infamous. Alex Mercer, the black light virus prototype from Prototype! Yep. That's right, champions. You voted for it, so we're finally yes. doing it. Long it's about fucking time too, because this battle has been the oh, has hey, literally been so trash. requested for so many years. Way back in 2013. Wait, we haven't emptied our trash in 10 years? He's whiz and I'm Excuse you? And it's our job to not analyze trash. the weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win no, a not. death battle. With great power comes great responsibility. Tommy McGuire is not the only superhero who's had to learn that lesson. Uh, yes. Cole McGrath was My just your average delivery boy in Empire City until one day he opened a package that exploded in his face. This was the rage. That destroyed the entire city. A device that, upon erupting, destroyed much of the city and tore through coal at the atomic level, killing him instantly. Nah, actually, he scooped up yeah, some superpowers. Yeah, see, that's right. We're focusing on the canonical good coal, while alternative one of the possible effects of More specifically, coal became a conduit, okay. one of many okay. beings who were granted supernatural abilities okay, from so the rage of explosion. Which also turned Empire City into a godforsaken hellscape. This insane. world needed a hero, yep. or at least an anti-hero willing to clean up the mess he sort of technically made. 
Cole put his power we into the Stoker's drag conduits, including the mastermind behind the blast, Kessler. Let's be real, none of Cole's powers are as sick nasty as his parkour skills, but his ability to manipulate electricity is pretty sweet too. Cole controls electromagnetic energy. Not only can he generate a smorgasbord of powerful lightning attacks, he can also manipulate thermal, kinetic, and gravitational energies. Electromagnetism is pretty broad, after all. This includes his radar pulse, which detects the bioelectricity inside organisms even if yeah, they're hidden or transformed. The and and for good measure, he got to add some ice powers to his kit. He can mm. throw ice grenades, shoot ice spikes, and let out some epic ice farts. <laughs> huh. He can levitate of like electric iron, grind on rails like Shadow the Hedgehog, read your mind like Goku's muffin button, charge up with extra karmic energy, also like Shadow the Hedgehog, and generate force fields like Shadow the Hedgehog. But these aren't just force fields. They literally convert any matter they touch into energy that Cole absorbs. That's insane. That's cool. How's that? Are you familiar with a little equation this called is true. E I is MC about that. squared? No. Oh, well, uh, it defines the mathematical relationship between matter and energy, essentially how much energy any given mass contains. Okay, the largest mass object Cole well, absorbs is a 343 gram helicopter chain gun round. Perfectly converting matter to energy is technically oh, impossible. Oh, really? What about the hey, time he absorbed game. a lightning The mass bomb. contained in that bullet, when multiplied by the speed of light squared, would release an energy equivalent to over 7 megatons of TNT. This means Cole's energy output is basically fueled by a nuclear reactor. Oh, so he's like a living super bomb, always ready to go what? up. Sounds like my first day. Except more damage Should to the beast than run nuke low on energy. He can drain it from nearby appliances to recharge. He's even learned to drain the bioelectricity from people like this. Yikes. Cole can focus his electricity through his amp, a giant tuning fork which lets him ring around the rosy to death. Or he can just make lightsabers out of his hands. That's cool anyway. too. And because he follows Pokemon rules, Cole's extra resistant to electric attacks. With these powers, Cole chewed through Kessler's forces. Yeah, but that means he's Sasha, extra effective against powers water. Could infect and control he can't even step and in the water if he's doing this thing, that son of a bitch himself mm -hmm. and pwned his ass. Despite Kessler having his exact same powers, Coincidence? Turns out the architect of Cole's misery was himself from an alternate future timeline. Yep. Manipulating events from the shadows to ensure this version of Cole became a better hero than Kessler ever was. Yeah, you see, Cole's superpowers are molded through his actions, increasing in power and utility based on how good or evil he acts. Naturally, as a good person, Cole shaped his powers to be more focused to target the bad guys. That pussy shit! Evil Cole is way more awesome, sus! He blows everything up! Collateral damage? Who cares? He can control fire! <laughs> well, that just happened. Uh, who wrote this shit? The point is, Kessler's whole plan was meant to prevent the apocalypse, which would appear in the form of the Beast, a conduit of unimaginable power. Cole is strong enough to create massive thunderstorms, fast enough to route electricity moving at 90% the speed of light, and maybe thanks to Kessler, tough enough to take on the Beast, which possessed the power of the Ray Sphere itself. It could regenerate at an atomic level and eradicate all of Empire City in a single attack. Fortunately, after a grueling battle, Cole defeated the Beast once and for all. Though ultimately, it wasn't Cole's power that made him a hero. In order to stop a plague created by the Ray Sphere, Cole sacrificed his life, eradicating the conduit genes and saving all of humanity. Sure, he also killed thousands of conduits in the process, but hey, what's a few corpses when building a better tomorrow? This trolley stops for no one! Cole was remembered as a saint by the people of Numeray, as a hero by the friends he left behind, and an inspiration to future That's generations. Cool. A true testament to the responsibility of power. Now I guess we get to see where Alex Murphy This episode of has. Death Battle is sponsored by Hello! And an ad. Of course there's an ad. Head to 642. Head to 642. I'm there. Okay, you ready? Yep. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. With great power comes great of course, responsibility. More McGuire, but I mean, not everybody's well, got an Uncle Ben to tell them. Them. Like, oh, wait, nobody's gonna always live out this world. Manhattan Island was gripped by the horrific Black Light virus, transforming its citizens into terrifying monsters. 
Perhaps Alex had no oh, memories. Yeah. He was a man without a past and maybe no future, mm -hmm. but he did have one thing. The black because he's a killer, a monster, a terrorist, because he's just so edgy. DNA. And somehow it granted mm -hmm. Alex incredible superhuman abilities. He can infect anyone he touches with this virus, yeah, gave him altering their biology at the molecular level in seconds and giving him complete control over their actions. So Alex pushed on, desperate to avenge himself mm -hmm. and the city by finding whatever monster unleashed this nightmare and eat them. Yeah, he can consume people yes, to give can. himself a power yeah. boost. Yeah, can't, do that Kirby, to, can't do that Kirby to Paul, though. To Lincoln Park. No, I know, but it's still sick. No, no, that, this that extra cool. biomass gives him superhuman down, strength, a greater metabolic pole. rate, increased reaction times, and even a regenerative healing factor. Essentially, Alex is an ever-evolving super being, mm -hmm. the ultimate being. Oh, oh, like Shadow the Hedgehog! By consuming victims, Alex also receives all their memories and experiences, yep. including Peter Randall, a 69-year-old nice. man whose entire history Alex processed in just 11 seconds. Being able mm -hmm. to condense that much information into that time frame means Alex can perceive events happening within five nanoseconds. Which is about how long I was married to my second ex-wife. <laughs> Alex can shapeshift his body at will, yep. creating disguises, increasing his muscle mass, mm -hmm. and forming nearly unbreakable armor. And when he wants to kill someone, he can become his own weapon, turning his limbs into claws and blades, or generating yep. countless tendrils that give him unmatched control over his environment. With these <laughs> goopy powers, he came up with a bunch of Street Fighter moves, like the air dash, the cannonball, the bullet <laughs> dive drill, up and the Hunter Dirt Nap. Pretty sure that was my third ex-wife's boyfriend's stripper name. And after consuming enough people, Alex reaches critical mass and can unleash his evil slop in powerful ultimate attacks. Like the Tendril Barrage Devastator. God, beautiful. That. Despite being seen as the world's most wanted terrorist, fair, Alex used his powers to stop the spread of the virus and end the city's nuclear devastation. Mm -hmm. It was then he learned the truth. He wasn't Alex Mercer at all. He was the black light virus itself, which absorbed the memories and likeness of the real Alex Mercer, mm -hmm. who was not only dead, but actually responsible for all of this in the first place. Oh, to decipher uh, yeah. this, I recreated the black light virus myself, the most dangerous... Uh, why is it empty? He's right behind me, isn't he? So the man Alex was hunting the whole time was himself. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. That's right, Boomstick. Turns out Dr. Alex Mercer helped create the Blacklight virus, and when things didn't work out and he was about to die, he recklessly unleashed it upon the city. What a petty SOB. What he didn't know was that the virus would merge with his sentience and memories and become a new Alex. How? Why? Don't question it, it's a nothing burger. But is this mass of viral material that calls itself Alex actually human in any meaningful way? The poor bastard sure tried to be. Too bad humans can be dicks and everyone kept betraying him. Even the so-called love of his life who shot him in the face. Yep. Oh, so <laughs> Alex figured, uh, obviously, humanity had to go. Not just go, but be made better. Whatever goodness remaining with this Alex was left behind as he plotted to unleash a second Blacklight virus, recreating humanity into a super species in his own image. Yeah, but that's the part of the second game. Great you stop him. Classic anime RPG villain stuff. And he was strong enough to do it. Alex can casually tear buildings apart, dodge supersonic tank shells, and even defeated the Supreme Hunter, who was tough enough to survive a nuclear blast that would have leveled Manhattan. Yep. Based on the blast radius given in-game, that's 450 kilotons of TNT. Speaking of nukes, Alex survived one. His healing factor is off the chain I and after being that. blasted into paste all he needed was the tiniest bit of himself to come back good as new. His healing occurs at the cellular level, making him virtually impossible to kill so long as he keeps consuming. But attempting to take over the world and kill millions of people pissed off a certain James Heller, a dude who had just had enough of his fucking weird fucking <laughs> rambling shit, who used the same virus yes. powers to consume Alex once and for all. Live by the Kirby symbiote, die by the Kirby symbiote. But was Alex just a virus? After all, I mean, what's more human than the urge to conquer the world, drive its species to the slaughter, consume its raw genetic resources, and crown yourself king? Maybe the day Alex Mercer died was the day he truly became human. Wow, that was intense. F yeah, it was. <laughs> this is interesting now, isn't it? This episode yeah, sponsored by. Interesting. Okay. So they both can casually tank a nuke, I'm guessing. Well, okay. 
Cole has never himself tanked a nuke. But let's just put... But if he's able to tank attacks from a beast that's able to fucking tank a nuke and rebuild himself like nothing happened, then it kind of goes to show that Cole's regeneration can definitely reach to that level. Mm-hmm. And plus, I'm just they said that Alex had... And plus, all they said was that Alex is... There was only just a piece of flesh left of him. So, like, there was nothing he could really do in that moment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, him being able to still... survive the 100, 450 megaton, bl megaton blast isn't really anything, especially since we're talking about biomass here. And if we're talking about biomass, the electricity mass that's inside of him, including the energy that's inside of him, can be absorbed by coal. Mm-hmm. And while... I would agree that Alex could rearrange Cole's um, DNA. Literally, the entire race fear did that already for him and is mm -hmm. immune to it because he's fought beings like the Beast that's able to do shit like that on the fly. Kessler, who at the time when he fought Cole in the first game, was actually able to do that since he literally showed him memories. Mm -hmm. And I do believe it along with another, but I forget which one. Who was it? Nah, it doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. when it comes down to it, who do I think... What What is this going to boil down to? Honestly? Probably Endurance. And when it comes down to it, they said that Alex needs to always be feeding. Well, for Cole, he just needs to have electricity in the air. And plus, he can absorb any sort of projectiles that Alex sends his way through his shield to just gain more mm -hmm. energy that way. Alex is... Is it... They didn't really say he needs to constantly consume. They just said that the more he consumes, the stronger he gets, basically. I guess that's true. But so it's not really the, an energy thing. It's not like if he's tired, let me consume. But biomass people. contains a type of energy, and bio mm -hmm. and that biomass of that energy can also because any type of energy can be conducted into electrical energy if you do it right mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. Especially since the type of energy slash lightning that Cole uses is completely different than natural lightning. Since mm -hmm. it's conduit energy, obviously. Man, this is going to be a weird one, for sure. They definitely chose a good one with this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with my boy Cole. I'm going with Alex Mercer. I have to. Okay, uh... Absolutely more part of that. <laughs> head to 1247. That's right when the bell is going to start, I do believe. I'm there. You ready? Yeah. In three, two, one, go. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a okay. death battle! I'm honestly, I'm excited to see how they animate this and what music they choose. Oh shit. I think I've still got room for dessert. <laughs> Buddy, you are one sick freak. This is interesting. Oh, that's interesting. This music's sick. Damn, he's bad. Oh. oh, I never realized he was coming that fast. This is interesting. Yes. Oh. Oh! That's all the fucking cold moves in the game. That's a cool callback. Mm -hmm. Like, that's gonna do anything, though, to Alex Murphy. We'll see. Ooh. What a nightmare. Oh, shit. You don't know the half of it. Oh, man. Oh, oh this is sick. Oh, my 
so one of the things you can do in the game is a prototype. Now you can pick up the literal helicopter and stun with an enemy. Yeah, well the thing that I would fucking pull can do is summon a literal tornado. Ooh. So much power, and yet you waste it on these vermin. You and I can change this world for the better. Damn. The only vermin I see here is you. Oh yeah, cool, let's go. Ah, oh, Cole! <laughs> okay, damn. 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 Take this! You don't want to give me your power! <laughs> Fine! I'll just take it! Boom. Good idea. Yeah! Okay. This world sure isn't perfect, but it's a lot better without you in it, asshole. That's my boy! Now I know where that script was in the trash. I had to hear someone say awesome sauce. <clears throat> both opponents were incredibly versatile and deadly, and both could match each other's powers blow for blow. They could each create weapons, amplify their strength, and fight at range. But could Cole survive Alex's infection? Well, Alex would usually need to weaken an opponent to get that trick to work. Even then, the Ray Sphere incident that created Cole's powers in the first place ripped apart everyone else down to the atomic level. And the Beast attacks were capable of the same thing. Exactly. Considering exactly. the Blacklight virus only works down to molecular DNA, it's reasonable to say Cole would be able to resist it. Sure, Alex could have potentially consumed Cole's biomass to give himself an edge, but Cole could just do the same thing to Alex, absorbing his bioelectricity to power himself back up. But nothing could challenge the gap oh. in power. I guess we pause then. Yeah. Cole McGrath. More powerful, better ranged options could resist the black light virus. Radar sense counters Alex's disguise. So actually this is true because he does have a radar sense in the game that can be able to allow him to detect certain individuals. So he mm -hmm. could easily use that to detect Alex if he hides. Vulnerable to possible corruption. Hmm. Alex Mercer. Smarter and more experienced. Harder to kill due to regeneration. Notably slower. Notably, huh? That's weird. Where you at? 1711. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. In three, two, one, go. Not match Cole's force fields, and especially not the power of the beast. The blast the beast created actually had a much wider radius than the one the Supreme Hunter could survive. To compete with these foes, this means Cole was simply far more powerful than Alex. Speaking of the beast, Cole's ability to disintegrate it at the atomic level meant that even Alex's crazy molecular regeneration couldn't stand up to Cole's might. Just like how Cole could overpower Kessler despite his resistance to electricity, or how he resisted Sasha's mind control powers, which were eerily similar to the Blacklight virus. But I bet you're wondering, what if Alex fought evil Cole instead? Oh, that would be well, a shit stop. it'd be even worse, because that Cole took the beast power for himself. That's good night for Angry Virus Boy. Exactly. Alex was a versatile, deadly mm -hmm. opponent, but Cole's counters, speed, and they even power set it. Alex I'm not even mad at the Cole outcome. Shoulder, it's, it was cool. Like yeah, it was a good fight. Script. I'm not against the type. I'm Cole he, Alex definitely put up a good fight. I may honestly play the game, to be honest. It does sound like a Thanks good game. Thanks for watching, and hey, are you a Death Battle member? Is, We've got a ballot going on right oh, man. now where members get to choose a matchup for the next season. So why click do I, that button and jump into our Champions Discord. Wait. What? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah! Megatron? No! That that's stupid! Free. No, it's free! Everyone's wanted it! No! But that's so dumb! Look how strong Frieza is compared to everything that we've but seen! Me you don't know what Megatron can do in the comics? Okay, okay. There's comics I will put this. Okay. I will put this as fair as I can possibly say this. Yes, there have been, like, also, like, people saying that they want Galactus versus Unicron. Unicron being one of the beings in the Transformers universe, the, a living planet, mm -hmm. basically. Or the core of Earth, depending on which version they use. But anyways, though, no, they have put, like, they have said that they wanted that, but I don't think that relatively puts Unicron at the same level of power as Galactus, dude. 
And if you guys remember, Thor versus Vegeta, they even literally said that Galactus is on a freaking power scale that's not even anywhere close to Dragon Ball. And by that, I mean, like, Zeno, the most powerful being in Dragon Ball, is not even close mm -hmm. to Galactus. Mm-hmm. I know. And Frieza's not even close to Zeno. So if you're going to put something like Unicron, which, by the way, Unicron's been defeated by Optimus Prime, and Megatron is pretty notable to Optimus Prime, then... Maybe Megatron might have a chance, but I don't know. I feel like it's going to be a shit stomp, or it's going to be a complete... I just think it's going to be cool. Freeze. Wait. No. Do not wonder, though. What? Are they going to include it? Well, Black Frieza, they did include Ultra Ego and Vegeta vs. Thor, which at the time was because only in the manga. So, yes, they will and probably play. it only play. is in the manga, so yes, Black Frieza. <laughs> no! <laughs> Violating... Well, if anything, it'll be interesting to see how they animate that. I want to see, yeah, because along with the color scheme. Because has the color scheme ever been officially revealed for that? Yeah, it's just black and silver. Freezing. Well, it's just like which areas are like more specifically like more darker than the other. You know where his purple was? Yeah. Uh, I think it's that. I think it's it's the same thing like Golden Freezer, but just swap from Golden Freezer to black. Oh. Change colors to black. Well, I don't know. I read the That's manga, and I haven't it. seen any rendered pictures of yeah. Black Frieza. Do you know it's sad? What? I'm not complaining, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to make shade at a Toei Animation or Dragon Ball. Technically speaking, Death Battle's the first animation we've seen of Ultra Ego Vegeta. Yeah, that and honestly, anime. to do, well, I mean, and to do probably Black Frieza. That, that, that is but that being said, fucking sad. That being said, though. The fight itself was really good and very interesting. I was honestly kind of curious as to who was going to win in the end. And mm -hmm, I'm glad same. that my boy won. Yes. Yep. And nothing against Alex, though. Alex definitely put up a good fight. And he was definitely interesting. I mean, I honestly put poets up when I, when, if I, when I can get it, of course. It's very cheap. I think they're like two or three bucks now. Two or three bucks. I'll have to check that, I guess, when I can. At least one of them was. All I know is there are some compatibility issues, I think, with PC. Yeah, well, I was able to play a lot of older games on my PC, so I should be able to. But anyways, though, guys, mm -hmm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did and would like to see more, please hit the like button down below and comment down below what other kinds of videos you like for us to you would like for us to do. And as always, we are your Crypt Keepers, and do come back for another tale, guys. See ya. Yeah.